Welcome to Home Farm. Living in the countryside poses problems that you don't typically face in the city. For example, our heating was fully done by an oil boiler, which means that we were hugely dependent on oil heating, our central heating, which is dirty and it's expensive. One of the first things we did when we moved into this property is we looked at an alternative and we installed an air source heat pump. Air source heat pumps replace the dirty oil energy and they utilize a far cleaner form of energy. Our air source heat pump is located behind this log store that we built ourselves. This video is going to be an overview of the Carnarvon 18 kilowatt air source heat pump that we've installed. It is a little bit technical as a video, but I will be doing another one that is going to be a lot simpler that is just going to discuss what air source heat pumps do why they are cleaner and why you should seriously consider them if you want to have a cleaner form of energy and one that is actually going to cost less money to run. This is the Carnarvon 18 kilowatt air source heat pump by Global Energy Systems. As you can see it's quite tall, it stands at about 1.8 meters and it's heavy which is why we built a concrete plinth underneath the heat pump so it has a solid base to stand on. Air source heat pumps cannot be contained too much so they need a lot of breathing space around them so that they don't trap the cold air. This is why you can see there's a big gap to the right and a big gap to the left and the area in front of the fan that expels the very cold air has been left completely open so it can force the air out. Due to the size and the noise that heat pumps make, we moved this heat pump away from the house. In order to do that, we then had to run a heat loss pipe under the driveway for about 25 meters that carries the hot water in a circuit motion from the heat pump through the water tank back here. This heat pump comes with a 4G antenna that 4G antenna communicates data back to Global Energy Systems Headquarters where they're able to analyze it and see if there are any issues with the performance or the efficiency of the pump which they can resolve remotely without having to come here. All of that is controlled by the control panel in the utility room which I will show you later. In order to run the heat loss pipe from the air source heat pump to the house itself we had to dig a 25 meter trench underneath the driveway all the way through to the main house. It was backbreaking work purely because we couldn't use a digger to do it as we have quite a lot of sewage pipes and water pipes that run underneath the driveway to the septic tank and the runoff. Now that you have seen the size of the air source heat pump you can understand why in our property it wasn't practical for us to put the heat pump outside the utility room. Since you can't build an enclosure around air source heat pumps because they need the movement of air, we had to move the heat pump further away from the house where we could hide it from public view. Due to the distance we had to use the heat loss pipe. As you can see heat loss pipes are heavily insulated which means that you are not losing heat while the hot water travels from the heat pump itself through to the water heater and the water tank. This now meant that we could set the heat pump away from the house where we then built the log store so that it wouldn't be visible to people that approach the property. Now let's move inside and see how our system is configured. So our old boiler used to be in the utility room the oil boiler has remained because we have a bivalent system just in case we need an extra kick if it does get really cold outside. As part of this interior process we needed to change the water tank and Global Energy changed ours to a 300 litre water tank, hot water tank, along with a 100 litre buffer store. Now thankfully we already had piped work for our radiators which pretty much run upstairs and our underfloor heating on the lower level. None of that had to change, just the, the new hot water tank had to get configured and connected to the new system. 
The other notable change was that we got a new control panel. The old one for the boiler was replaced with this new one from Global Energy. This allows you to do all the tweaks that you would possibly require with the system itself. Uh, you can vary the different temperature settings. Uh, there are a lot of options that you can actually get through. And what is probably of the most interest is that this also allows for Global Energy to connect to this particular system remotely uh, via the 4G antenna that I've showed you earlier. The most useful and beneficial screen for me is the one that we're looking at now. The water flow at the top and the tank temperature at the bottom are the two things that I keep regular tabs on. The water flow is basically the temperature of the water that's going to be heating the underfloor heating as well as the radiators. It's currently at only 28.6 degrees because you can see the tank and the, uh, the whole system is actually on standby mode because it's a pretty warm day outside which is why there's no demand for the, the heating of the water for the radiators and the underfloor heating to be taking place. The other important um, number for me is the tank temperature. Now I can see just from looking at that that we're having a very good solar day because our iBoost Plus is taking all our excess solar energy and uh, running the immersion heater which is heating up our tank temperature. Typically, we've set our tank temperature at only 45 degrees uh, if the air source heat pump has to heat it uh, by itself, but we do allow it to exceed 60 degrees if uh, the, the, the iBoost is heating the water. Since we are getting quite a lot of the pipe work changed with regards to connecting the exterior pipes to the new water tank, we took the opportunity to also install the Furnox TF1 total filter. Basically, this connects uh, at the end of the, of the entire water system and it has a big magnet, well, not big, but it has a magnet running through the middle of it, which is basically collecting any metals that are falling away within your heating system. So you're able to service this quite regularly. I take ours apart probably about every six weeks, take it out and just clean the little magnet. This is also a very interesting uh, little gadget in that you can open the top portion of it and pour in an extra 500 milliliters of, of fluid or liquid into the actual system. So if you need to add any extra glycol or if you want to add extra inhibitors to the actual system, this is the perfect way of doing it without having to flush the entire system and think of other ways of trying to accomplish that. We also had a solar iBoost installed as part of the system. We always knew that the air source heat pump was going to consume vast amounts of electricity, so we put in quite a vast array of solar panels to work in conjunction with this. The way the solar iBoost works is that when we have excess electricity produced by the solar panels that is not being utilized by the house, instead of setting that electricity back to the grid, it channels that electricity to the immersion heater within the water tank, and it heats our water tank to a, a far higher temperature without having to use the air source heat pump or additional electricity. Every air source heating system is going to have a different setup and this will vary from house to house. In our case, Global Energy installed these Salus thermostats to call for heat in different zones throughout the house. The reason we have done this is because different zones require different heating programs. We are currently in the north facing portion of the house which gets the coldest so this needs to have its own ability to be able to call for heat if these rooms get too cold. One of the most appealing features of these Salus thermostats is that they operate wirelessly so it just basically screws onto the wall and you connect it to your router via a little hub that comes uh, with the Salus units and they are basically able to communicate directly to the control panel in our utility room and call for heat if this temperature drops below a required threshold. When we moved into this property, the house was running heat miser thermostats for the underfloor heating throughout the downstairs. We upgraded the units to the slimmer version of the latest heat miser offering and what makes these really great is that they run via the Neo Hub, which basically allows us to utilize the app on our phones to 
program and change temperatures in various zones. This particular thermostat is located in the hallway, which is the coldest room. So this one is programmed to operate differently to the one in the dining room and the living room. When we moved into the property, all the radiators throughout the house had what I term old school TRVs. What we did is we upgraded them to the Eve Elgato Smart TRVs and this allowed us to program heating schedules for all the rooms across the house. This upgrade ensured that our radiator system in particular was running far more efficiently in that we weren't unnecessarily heating rooms that were maybe up to temperature or that were over temperature. This will give you a very quick idea of the three pieces of technology that we have working in conjunction with the air source heat pump. At this point in time, everything is working uh, very smoothly and we're getting great heating throughout the house. Uh, but I will be doing a more thorough review of each of the components that you have seen thus far in separate videos where we can really delve into how we have integrated them into our system, how they're performing and how they generally work. Thanks for watching. You can also follow us on Instagram or check out our website at myhomefarm.co.uk. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe button below. And if you have any suggestions for any other videos you would like to see, please leave a comment. We hope to see you on our next video.